Hello, welcome to Leadership in Action, a series of short, timely, and relevant interviews with law firm leaders on issues important to running a successful mid-sized law firm. These podcasts are part of the Managing Partner Series presented by Thomson Reuters in affiliation with the Managing Partner Forum and are hosted by John Remsen, Jr., CEO of the Managing Partner Forum and President of the Remsen Group. Our guest this month is Glenn Callison, shareholder at Munch, Hart, Koff, and Har, based in Dallas, Texas, with approximately 120 attorneys. Glenn served as Chairman and Chief Executive Officer from 2006 to 2013. He has a broad-based experience in commercial real estate and has represented a number of clients in connection with the acquisition and ongoing operation of other businesses with substantial real estate assets. Welcome, Glenn and John. Well, Colleen, thank thank you very much. And, Glenn, welcome to our podcast series. We appreciate your being with us this afternoon. Thanks, John. It's my pleasure to be with you all. And before we sink our teeth into this month's topic, which is uh, your advice to the new firm leader, uh, why don't you tell us a little about, about your law firm, Munch Hart, its history, and some of its strategic priorities uh, looking into the future. You bet, John. Well, um, our firm actually celebrated its 30th anniversary this year. Uh, it was founded back in 1985. Uh, by six uh, gentlemen who were all actually associates um, at another Dallas-based firm. Uh, They were either side of 30 years old. Uh, They uh, were all friends and decided to uh, break off and form their own firm. There were a a number of folks that thought they uh, uh, might be a little crazy at the time. In fact, they were just really uh, very entrepreneurial, and that sort of entrepreneurial spirit really, you know, continues to uh, pervade um, our firm today. So we've been fortunate uh, because we're based in Texas to see a lot of great growth over the last several years in particular and really have tried to kind of strategically position our firm uh, to assist clients uh, in the middle market and, and above uh, as they've uh, taken advantage of those growth opportunities. Well, it sounds like you all have a great thing going on and have built an extremely successful law firm, so congratulations. And and as we were setting up today's uh, podcast, you were sharing with me that you were the first non-founding partner to assume the leadership role at the firm. Yeah, uh, my predecessor was not uh, a founder, but he had joined soon after that, and so he was a contemporary of the founders. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I'm uh, a few years after that. Uh, And so I think one of the strengths – of those early, you know, uh, shareholders in the firm and those founders in particular was the willingness to bring in younger attorneys into the firm management model and, and sort of that openness uh, about allowing others uh, uh, to to participate in, in firm management. And uh, uh, that, again, you know, very much uh, sort of defines how we operate as a firm. It's very collaborative, uh, very open, really, you know, um, encouraging all of our attorneys to, you know, to participate because we feel like we're all going to be better and more successful at serving our clients if we're all engaged in that process as opposed to folks just kind of showing up and, and, and hoping somebody else is uh, working on the administrative um, and business elements uh, of the firm. So, you know, from, you know, the point I joined the firm, you know, over 20 years ago, uh, I immediately was able to jump into to various firm administrative functions, including, you know, recruiting and business development and uh, ultimately serving on the firm's management committee and then uh, stepping in as the CEO uh, for a period of eight years. Uh, now, and then, Glenn, did they tap you to be managing partner, or did you sort of want the role and, and uh, make a play for it? Now, some might suggest I drew the short straw, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, after, you know, several years, uh, you know, serving as a hiring partner, serving on this firm's compensation committee, and and uh, uh, and then you know in that management committee role, I, I'd sort of done a lot of the different elements, and and so it was just it just seemed like it was the right time. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure that there was anybody else clamoring for the position, and, and similarly when I stepped out, um, uh, Phil Appenzeller, who's the current firm CEO, um, had been working with me as the chief operating officer for the prior two years, and it's not as if he was hand selected or groomed. It's an open election process, so you know any uh, you know, shareholder in the firm can run for the spot. 
but uh, you know, Phil was clearly the person who was most qualified and the, the one that I think all the shareholders felt like was the best equipped uh, to, to step in. And, and so that was you know, not unlike you know, the situation when I uh, took over from my predecessor, Jim Jordan, uh, mm-hmm. back in 2006. Well, it's certainly not an easy role, and uh, we talk about herding cats, and uh, lawyers love their autonomy, and uh, uh, it is challenging to lead them. And uh, when we decided to do this topic, which is uh, advice to the new managing partner, I immediately thought of you because I remember reading an article in Texas Lawyer Magazine uh, where you dispensed guidance to uh, a new managing partner, and I thought it was a great article. We featured it on our website. So I thought you'd be the natural person to, to talk about this topic because, to be honest with you, Glenn, I think a lot of uh, you know lawyers assuming the leadership role really don't know what they're getting themselves into, and it's often a thankless role. Um, you know, involves a lot of non-billable time, and um, you know, as we know, lawyers are focused on the billable hour and the dollars you're bringing in the door, and um, you know, often don't don't appreciate. Uh, you know what the managing partner brings to the table. So, well, John, I, I think you're really right on that that topic. Uh, it, even though I'd received a good bit of guidance and uh, from my predecessor and, and had sort of seen him operating in the, the various roles that I was working in before stepping into the CEO role, I, I don't know that you could ever be kind of fully prepared for this. Just the responsibility of knowing that you're you know the person who's you know. Um, responsible for the strategic direction of the firm and, and making sure that uh, the other operational uh, elements of the firm are all working correctly. So so after uh, about eight months or nine months in the role, uh, uh, I had this sort of idea about, you know, doing this, this you know, article, which I call five, you know, five to remember, which is, you know, sort of five um, keys of, 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 you know, being successful you know, as a, a leader within a law firm. And, and I really, you know, took a lot of those lessons, uh, not necessarily from, you know, legal sources, but, but from other business models uh, and, and writers on business processes that, that seemed to be very applicable to what we were trying to do in the law firm, and in particular, Jim Collins, uh, mm-hmm. who uh, had written Good to Great, Good to great yep, and, great and several other companions' books, had just, you know, I thought several really, you know, kind of important factors that uh, that I had tried, you know, to implement, you know, early on uh, as the, the firm CEO. Well, I think, you know, law, law firms in general can learn a lot by looking at other professions and, and the business community, and so often they're they're so insular in their thinking and don't look beyond what other law firms are doing. And so I think that was, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, forward-thinking back then. And, and at the Managing Partner Forum, we're constantly suggesting that you look outside the legal profession um, uh, to find what works when it, ter- when it comes to leadership and organizational behavior and governance models and such. Um, but let's got, get right to your, your advice to that new managing partner and perhaps pulling from your article a bit. Um, what, what advice would you give uh, a future firm leader who's stepping into the role or considering stepping into the leadership role? Sure. I mean, I, I think the first is doing a very healthy self-assessment. Uh, the, the first point I covered uh, in the, the article was knowing who you are. And, and so doing that sort of inward look, understanding what makes your firm tick, understanding what your strengths are, what the weaknesses are, and being kind of brutally honest about that self-assessment is, is, I guess, the most important, you know, first step. Some people want to, you know, jump immediately to the, you know, forward thinking, you know, where are we going strategy. Uh, mm-hmm. But until you kind of know, um, you know, who's on the bus and who, who are the people that you have working on your team and, and, and how they work together, it's, it's really, I think, difficult to, to plan for the, the forward thinking strategy. Uh, and so, so, you know, part of that's just, uh, you know, making sure you have an open environment where people are talking to each other and that, that as the CEO, you're getting out and knowing your people, knowing, you know, uh, what they're bringing to the table and, and knowing what their weaknesses are. That self-assessment, did you, did you take any psychological profiles like a Myers-Briggs or a DISC or a, or a no, I think it or was, any of these it, instruments to help yeah. identify your strengths, weaknesses, and, and management style? I had done that myself at, at some point, you know, in the past uh, to try to understand, you know, what, you know, kind of my, 
you know, particular, um, you know, personality traits and management, uh, uh, you know, uh, traits were, uh, but we did not do that formally throughout the firm. It was much more of an informal process, which is, you know, kind of the management by walking around. You know, you just, you know, you stick your head in the yep. door Get out of your partner and, and, and uh, I love that theory. figure out what they're working on and what they're struggling with and, and, uh, and just try to, you know, you know, use that in connection with, you know, more objective data, you know, you know, how many hours is somebody billing, what their rates are, what do the rate structures look like, you know, as compared to competitors, you know, what areas are, you know, um, uh, taking off, which ones might be lagging, and just, you know, kind of synthesizing all that data and, and, and really not just trying to do it myself, but uh, engaging my management team, uh, my mm-hmm. executive director, our accounting folks, our IT people, um, as well as other, you know, lawyers on the, the management committee and, and the practice group leaders as well, and really trying to get all of the resources, you know, working, you know, towards that, that kind of self-assessment. You know, we, uh, we did a program last week in Chicago for managing partners in training and did administer some of these psychological profiles, and, um, you know, that self-assessment is really, really important. And, um you know, the importance of knowing your strengths and getting out, walking around. And we spent a lot of time talking about the difference between leadership and management. And, and most, most of the people in the room, about 25, really didn't have a good grasp on, on the difference between management and leadership. Leadership involves people, vision, uh, really knowing your organization and influencing them to work together to achieve lofty goals. Um, I personally love your title uh, in, in your leadership role, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer. You know, that suggests leadership as opposed to the title Managing Partner, which is what, you know, the title bestowed on most law firm leaders. Um, I would like to say that was great intention on our part. I think it was much more a factor that we're a, a professional corporation rather I than see. a partnership. But, okay. but it is, you know, a factor of, of, of trying, you know, to be out there you know, as a leader, but, you know, in, in law firms, and I, I, I said this in the article, and it's, I think it's very much true today, it's not a typical, you know, top-down hierarchy leadership model. Uh, it's a collaborative, you know, uh, model where you really only have sort of the authority um, and the ability to lead to the extent your partners or, you know, other fellow shareholders holders are willing to follow you. Yeah, willing uh, uh, to be led. Yeah, the, 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 the difference is you've got, a, you know, a hundred, you know, different people who are all very high-performing, you know, intelligent folks uh, that typically have pretty type A personalities, yeah, and, uh, and they're just not going to do whatever you tell them. They're going to want to know why. They're going to, you know, question your, you know, uh, methods, and, uh, and you've got to have good answers and, and the ability to, to really, you know, direct them, you know, both – um, with a, a very sound strategy as well as, you know, an ability to, to get in there and, and work side by side with them. You know, we talked about building credibility among your partners, so they want to follow your lead, your vision, um, and you're a firm first kind of guy, and you're not doing this for selfish reasons, uh, but you really care about the firm and you're passionate about its future and its success. Uh, really important characteristics of a successful managing partner. Absolutely, and it's and it's very integral to sort of a firm culture, yeah. uh, where you have people who you know are willing to engage for sort of a, a greater kind of common good at the firm, as opposed to being in more of a you know eat what you kill every man for themselves mm-hmm. environment. And that's I think one of the things that has always tried to you know we've tried to set apart in our firm that because we have um, a culture that encourages that kind of teamwork and the collaboration, and we have a compensation model, importantly, that it reinforces that as opposed to, you know, um, um, you know being um, uh, destructive of that. Uh, it, it really does allow us uh, to achieve kind of bigger picture goals as opposed to just a bunch of individual goals. Good stuff. Really good stuff. What, were you, what was your biggest surprise when you assumed the leadership role at your firm? Um, just one, how incredibly time-consuming the administrative elements are, and it's, and it's always those things that you don't necessarily have on your calendar or expect. You know, it's the thing that just walks into your door and says, 
you know, here's this new issue that, uh, you know, nobody was expecting. So you know, it could be everything from, you know, the IT technology, you know, surprise or gotcha to, you know, some accounting thing to, you know, some particular practice area, you know, or personnel, you know, management uh, uh, piece of it. So that that part of it, uh, um, even though I knew that was going to happen, it still ended up uh, being a bit of surprise. You know, our firm, we try to, to – uh, maintain some of the sort of the credibility of of the, the leadership roles by making the, the you know the, the CEO you know a practicing attorney. You know, there's our firm's big enough there where it could be a completely full time job. I suspected that at some point I was going to return to full time practice, uh, you know, given, you know, the 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 years of practice I've been out. And so I really was glad to be able to keep a part of my practice and those client relationships. One, because I just enjoyed doing it, uh, and two, uh, you know, I knew that's what was going to allow me to be successful in transitioning back. And 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 then probably third and most importantly, it allowed me to to really have a sense of what our other attorneys were doing day in and day out, uh, because I think that's just important. I think mm-hmm. you know a managing partner can get too isolated, you know, yeah. from from the day to day practice and forget you know the challenges. Of meeting client expectations and getting billable hours and collecting you know fees and all that stuff and and uh, if you do that you you lose something that's important so so um, the, the the line that I like to use when I was telling people how it was going is that, you know about two thirds of my time was managing the firm and about two thirds of my time was managing practice and somehow the math wasn't working. Um, yeah, yeah, that that's something more than one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but it was you know, it's the nature of, of law yeah. practice generally, you know, it's it's not predictable whether it's the administrative side or you know, I, it's, you know, I, I call it those those uh, got a minute encounters. Yeah. You know, when you're doing your management by walking around, got a minute and that minute turns yeah, into two hours 30 later. Minutes, Forty yeah. minutes. <laughs> so it's it's got to be challenging to manage the time, and um, it it does take a boatload of time. And I hear many of the managing partners. Uh, I've heard 75% of my time is leading the firm. 75% of my time is trying to practice some law, and you know my my family. Um, uh, you know, notable, put you, put your family on alert that uh, uh, you might not be getting home early every night, and uh, might might come home in a grumpy mood from time to time, dealing with the challenges of, of leading a law firm. It's uh, nothing quite like it. And now, uh, no question, there's a lot of challenges there, but also incredibly rewarding. I mean, just yeah. the the opportunity to really understand how you know our firm functions. You know, both as, you know, uh, a professional services firm, you know, helping clients solve their problems, you know, and, you know, as a, you know, $50 million plus business. Uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, I felt that the experience gained over that eight year period of problem solving, of strategic yep. planning, of dealing with, you know, budgets and, you know, just was invaluable and, and just got to meet a lot of great people, you know, through the process, including yourself and, and others in our profession and outside of the profession. So uh, on the whole, it was a, an incredibly positive, good experience. You know, we do a lot of polling of managing partners, as you know, through our managing partner, uh, you know, conference and, and uh, occasionally some online stuff. And, and it's amazing the number of managing partners that don't have job descriptions, don't have an exit strategy, aren't grooming their successors. And I think those are, are, are things to consider as you step into the role. Um, did you have a job description as you assumed the mantle? I did. Uh, so uh, our, our firm had had put that together for um, my predecessor. They updated it uh, when I stepped in, and, and it made it clear that, uh, especially as we um, evolved to sort of a, a CEO and COO role, along with a, a non-lawyer executive director, that we wanted to, to make sure. And, you know, each of, you know, those positions had, you know, at least a general description of what the expected duties were, you know, and, and yet still knowing that, that it was, you know, uh, uh, a structure that allowed some flexibility. I mean, for instance, uh, the, the, the three roles I just named, COO, CEO, and executive director, that forms our executive committee. We would have regular weekly executive committee meetings to really try to deal with a lot of the um, the day-to-day nuts and bolts stuff of the, the firm organization. Then we would have a monthly meeting with a larger management committee made up of 
uh, practice group leaders and some elected uh, um, shareholders from around the firm and, and from different offices. Mm -hmm. And those monthly meetings would try to be more strategic and not mm -hmm. as right. much down. Right, not administrative. Yeah, and uh, uh, and then then we would have you know monthly meetings with our stockholders where we would try to report out mm -hmm. you know at a high level and have some kind of informational takeaways as well mm -hmm. with you know retreats built in there along the way to to really um, feed back into the strategic planning and strategic implementation process. Well, I, I, the firm's success speaks for itself, and um, and your role is, uh, you were seven years in the role and uh, and obviously had a, had a tremendous impact on, on that firm's success. Um, anything else uh, we haven't yet talked about, Glenn, that you'd like to share with, uh, with firm leaders uh, before we uh, call it a session? You bet. The, the, the last thing I guess I'd just wrap up on it was sort of the, the, the last point that I'd put in the article out there. Just be prepared that, you know, change is constant. Um, when I stepped into the role in 2006, you know, the firm, you know, was booming because the economy was booming and that and continued on through 2007. And then 2008 hit and, uh, and the world changed. And, uh, and fortunately our firm tried to position itself uh, to be able to adapt to different you know, uh, parts of the cycle. I mean, they're called cycles for a reason. <laughs> and and so we tried to, to, to make sure that during, you know, up cycles, uh, we had the transactional capabilities to take care of clients' needs. Uh, as those areas slowed down during a down cycle, we wanted to make sure we had the controversy practices, including, you know, the bankruptcy and restructuring practices uh, that would be very busy. And, and, and yet, through that, there's a lot of transition. Um, and then you have, you know, you know, in, you know, constant change from the technology standpoint. You know, new offices opening, offices growing. You know, attorneys coming, attorneys going, and and so being um, adaptable to the change, and even trying to get ahead of it, and and see what's coming next, and 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 making sure that the organization is well positioned uh, is just is very important. I mean, that's that's the the biggest part of the the job, at least in my mind. You know, uh, when you're you're leading a firm, is is not just to you know kind of manage by looking backwards, but continue to look forward and and see what's coming down the road next. And you know, and we continue to be in a you know that cycle of rapid change. Uh, you know, particularly here in Texas, there's lots of new firms coming into the marketplace from outside because it's a great place to, to practice and so everybody wants to be here. And as a Texas-based firm, you know, we end up being a, a, a big target for people who want an instant presence in Texas. And, and we've been, you know, uh, careful to always look at those opportunities. But thus far, I have found that, you know, our independence and our autonomy is, is probably the best thing for our clients um, and for, um, you know, our other shareholders. So, but, you know, but that's not necessarily always going to be the case. We have to continue to be open to, you know, to what's coming next. But uh, but for the moment, uh, we're, we feel very optimistic about how we're positioned in the market and, uh, you know, the, the opportunities that are, you know, continuing to come our way. You know, I think the pace of change is only going to accelerate and uh, looking forward, not backward, at the way we've always done things. And, uh, you know, how lawyers are. We've never done that before. Or, uh, you know, looking at the history and the tradition, the way we've always done things around here. And I think you have to evolve and adapt uh, if you're going to remain viable and competitive and successful. Uh, in today's marketplace. So um, I think, you know, the firm leader is, is, is uh, in, in many respects, that catalyst for change and uh, keeping your lawyers looking forward and adapting uh, to, the, to the change in marketplace. Glenn, all good stuff. And um, unfortunately, I, I think our time has come to an end, and uh, we really appreciate your participation in, in this podcast series, and thank you so much for your time this afternoon. John, it's my pleasure. It's always nice to talk to you, and Colleen, uh, very nice uh, uh, to talk to you as well. And Colleen, we'll kick it back to you to wrap us up. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Managing Partner Series, Leadership in Action. For more information and resources, visit LegalSolutions.com backslash Managing Partner.